This is Hart ES-30, the electric plane which is to become the world's first to fly passengers on a regular route with normal tickets bought on airline website. Actually the tickets for the very first flight have already been available to buy and they are already sold out even though the first flight itself is scheduled for 2028. But no other plane has advanced so far in its engineering to be able to operate regular commercial flights so there is no sign in the industry that some other plane would be able to overtake it by 2028. Moreover, while other electric planes that are being developed in the industry are mostly small cargo planes or small private jets, ES-30 is to become a plane for regular regional flights. And that intrigued me to find out if its creators have managed to overcome the crucial challenges that have prevented us to see electric planes in operation until now and that still retain other engineers in developing only very small electric planes. So I have asked the Swedish company developing this plane, Hart Aerospace, some deeper questions and received some deeper answers that allowed me to have a more complete picture of its engineering. Let's dive first into the challenges of electric planes. There are three main challenges or even obstacles that still have to be overcome in the path of having electric planes widely adopted in the sky. Weight, battery operating temperature and range requirements. The weight is kind of obvious. We all know that batteries are heavy. A plane needs to fly and be able to keep its lift in the sky, so the weight is much more crucial than for a car or a truck that has its wheels on the ground. Putting a larger battery on an electric plane to have enough energy for longer trips brings the flying formula very fast to its physical limits with current batteries. That's why having higher energy density for those batteries is of utmost importance. So having more kilowatt hour of storage capacity per kilogram or pound of weight. And there is more, normal jet planes that burn fuel take off heavier and land with less weight, because they burn tons of fuel in the sky. Electric planes have the same battery weight when taking off and when landing, and that limits the weight of the plane even more to its maximum landing weight. And since landing takes place at a slower speed, that weight is also lower. That is why other electric planes in current development are small in size in a lighter class. The second challenge, the operating temperature of the battery, is not so obvious but at high altitudes, at 30,000 feet for example, where the air is thinner and cruising efficiency is higher, the outside temperature is minus 50 or minus 55 degrees Celsius or as low as minus 67 Fahrenheit. We know that electric cars with lithium-ion batteries sometimes struggle with even minus 18 Celsius or 0 Fahrenheit, having worse charging performance and smaller autonomy, especially without thermal management. So ensuring battery operation at minus 55 Celsius or minus 67 Fahrenheit would require either an energy-consuming thermal management system or a wonder solution. That is why other currently developing electric planes fly as low as 3000 feet or up to around 5000 to be at an altitude where the ambient temperature is higher. But that kills efficiency in consumption since the air is denser. The third problem is related to range requirements and aviation standards of having redundancy safety measures doubling every possible system. So if a plane has to fly a route of 250 miles or 400 kilometers, it has to have enough fuel for that flight plus 5% above for real life route or condition variations, plus fuel for taxiing before takeoff and eventual missed approaches on landing, plus the fuel to fly to an alternate airport if landing is impossible at the first one. So that may be quite a reserve needed beside the flight distance. And for electric planes that means an even bigger battery needed even for small planes that adds weight. That's why we are only talking about short regional distances in case of electric planes at this phase. Well, let's see what are the parameters of Hart ES-30 and if they manage to overcome these challenges. Well, ES-30 is to be a plane for regional flights, bigger than anything electric that is being developed now, but still small comparing to current fuel-powered planes. It will have space for 30 passengers on board and their luggage, and it is comparable to small fuel-powered regional planes. The announced range is 200 km or 125 miles for the first planes that will operate from 2028 and at first it was unclear if that is referred to the distance between cities or if it included all the required additional range with all the reserves. Hard Aerospace states a time of 30 minutes to fly those 200 km and a battery recharging time of only 30 minutes on the ground. 
Swedish engineers also announced that with development of battery technology, that range will increase to 300 km by the mid-2030s and to 400 km or 250 miles by 2040. Not a very fast growth pace, isn't it? Propulsion is ensured by four electric motors with yet unknown power. Hard Aerospace has published images with a view through on some parts of its engineering. The green elements in the lower part are the batteries. Hard Aerospace hasn't communicated the energy density until now, but they did communicate it in their answers to my questions. But before commencing to that, there is a big difference to mention in the formula of this electric plane. Fuel-powered turbo generators. Yes, the four propellers are powered by four electric motors consuming electricity from the battery packs, but ES30 is announced to have fuel-powered turbo generators as a backup solution that can extend the range with 200 more kilometers or 125 more miles. Those turbo generators will not participate in propulsion, but will generate electricity for the electric motors to operate the propellers. In their answers to me, Hart Aerospace says the ES30 will have two turbo generators, both located in the aft fuselage. Why would they need them instead of going for larger battery? Well, weight saving, of course, and range requirements. So two of those three main challenges are addressed by this crucial difference in this plane's engineering. Two turbo generators with a fuel tank needed for them to ensure 200 km or 125 miles of additional range, weight less than doubling the battery size to have 200 km more, besides the 200 the current battery can already ensure. Hard Aerospace have confirmed to me that the announced ranges are operational, the distance the aircraft is capable of flying basically. And the idea is that 200 km or 125 miles on batteries would be the normal distance between two airports in a regional flight. And the additional requirements including the alternate range to a backup airport are supported by the turbo generators. That way, ES30 can make full use of its battery capacity during a flight for propulsion. I've asked also about the operating temperature of those batteries. Hart publicly announced a flight altitude of 20,000 feet or 6,600 meters for ES30, much higher than other electric planes being developed now. At that altitude, the average temperature is minus 25 degrees Celsius or minus 13 Fahrenheit. Hart Aerospace told me that ground support equipment will be used to condition the battery, both cooling and heating, during ground operations, including charging. In flight, a thermal management system will keep the batteries at operational temperatures, but even in the absence of that system's intervention, the thermal mass of the battery is large enough to keep the batteries at operational temperature. No heating will be required during flight. So in other words, the required discharge power from the battery to power the airplane motors is so high that even that slight loss of energy in heat will be sufficient to keep the batteries warm at 20,000 feet altitude, without additional energy consumption for heating them. By the way, Hart refused to disclose the power of the four electric motors of ES30 at this stage. They also refused to disclose the maximum takeoff weight of the airplane now but confirmed that the takeoff weight will be equal to landing weight if the turbo generators are not included. If they are, then the landing weight will be lower minus the weight of the burned fuel. And Hart Aerospace was much more willing to disclose me the details of the batteries this aircraft is using. So ES30 will use batteries with an energy density of 330 watt hour per kilogram. Putting that in perspective, Tesla's renowned 4680 batteries have from 276 up to 292 that hour per kilogram, but in the same time, Cattle has recently announced 500 that hour per kilogram batteries ready for production, specifically aimed at aviation. For now, Hart Aerospace remains true to keeping 330 watt hour per kilogram for its batteries developed with BIA systems. I asked what is the total weight of the batteries in an ES30 then, and I received the answer. 5 metric tons, which is roughly 11,000 pounds. I remind you that we don't know the maximum takeoff weight for ES30, but we can remember Saab 340, a plane that could also have 30 passengers or a bit more, and it had a maximum takeoff weight of 13.5 tons or 29 to 30,000 pounds. 
The maximum landing weight for Saab plane was 28,500 pounds or 12.9 tons. So 5 tons of batteries out of a comparable weight is significant. By the way, for Saab 340 the fuel weight was 2.58 tons and with that amount it had a range of 1076 miles or 1731 kilometers. ES30 has 200 km range with 5 tons of batteries. That is just to acknowledge where the development of electric planes is situated at this moment. Well, and by communicating me the energy density of the batteries and the total weight, Hart Aerospace involuntarily also communicated the battery capacity of the ES30. At 330 Watt hour per kilogram or 0.33 kilowatt hour per kilogram and having 5000 kilograms of batteries, it means a total capacity of about 1.65 megawatt hour and I assume that would be the gross capacity, while the net capacity will be about 1.5 megawatt hour. To charge that in 30 minutes as they say, it would require at least 3 megawatts of power and I would assume it would be split into 3-4 compartments charged in parallel at about 750 1 megawatt charging power each. Having that charging power would mean at least the same amount of discharging power from the batteries to the motors, so I can assume that the four electric motors will have at least 3 megawatts of propulsion power in total with an even higher peak power to take off. And that also fits into the idea of flying the 200 km range in 30 minutes, thus consuming 1.5 megawatt hour of electricity in 30 minutes which means an average power consumption of 3 megawatt hour per hour and that results in a power of 3 megawatts. And finally, finding the average energy consumption related to distance for hard ES30 would mean dividing the 1.5 megawatt hour battery capacity to the 200 km of range and then we get the following results. 750 kilowatt hour per 100 km or 7.5 kilowatt hour per kilometer or 12 kilowatt hour per mile. It is about 5 times more than an electric truck or 50 times more than a Tesla Model 3 for example, but planes always consume more than trucks or cars and we have to divide that amount to 30 passengers and maybe even adding crew. So with that said, we now know much more about the ES30, its propulsion system formula, its range, consumption, its reliance on turbo generators for alternate range and we also know the battery, energy density, weight and capacity and even could deduce the charging power and the minimum discharging power of the energy sent to the motors and thus having a minimum power figure for propulsion. The first flight scheduled for 2028 will be operated by Scandinavian Airlines, a company which is also an investor and shareholder in Hart Aerospace together with United Airlines. And the tickets which are sold out now cost 165 euro being affordable on purpose to keep the feeling of a regular flight. Hart Aerospace says it has orders for 230 electric planes and options for 100 more. Well, if you like this video and would like more of engineering and covering, subscribe to our Energy channel and write what you think of this ES30 electric plane or electric planes in general in the comments below. I would love to see discussions on it in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you soon.